Hello, I'm Professor Sims, and this video is a demonstration on how to pour nutrient agar plates from the pre-mixed nutrient agar that's in your kits. And this is for my online microbiology lab class. So the nutrient agar plates are going to be used for lab sessions one, lab one, experiment one, lab sessions two and six. Uh, it's actually going to be used for all three experiments in lab two and for experiment two in the lab six. So you're going to need multiple nutrient agar plates and I recommend even making more than what you think you're going to need just in case you make a mistake or something gets contaminated and you want to do it over or if you accidentally cut the agar when you're trying to inoculate the plates. Things can happen so I do recommend making more than you'll need and you certainly have enough agar and petri dishes in your kit to make extras. You do want to prepare these at least one hour before you're going to need to use them. You're first going to want to liquefy the pre-made nutrient agar that comes in the bottles in your kit and then you're going to be pouring that liquefied agar into your petri dishes and then you will allow them to cool at room temperature and they will solidify at room temperature. Some things to be very mindful of is that when the agar is liquefied it's going to be very hot. You're going to want to keep your plates closed as much as possible. So you want to keep the lids on them and you want to keep the lids above them when you're actually working inside the plate in order to protect the agar from getting contaminated with airborne contaminants. And this goes for when you're pouring the plates, for when you're inoculating the plates, when you're observing the plates, you always want to keep them closed as much as possible. And once you've poured your plates and they've solidified, you can store these in the refrigerator. You can even store them near food if they've not been inoculated with anything yet. In other words, if they're still sterile. But you do want to keep them sealed in either a Ziploc bag or some kind of sealable plastic container. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to take the nutrient agar out of the kit and you're going to want to loosen the cap. And there's, there's more than one method that you can use. You can use hot water bath with boiling water on the stove, but that takes about 25 to 35 minutes. Um, so I'm going to recommend doing it in the microwave. So you see here, you're going to put a, a plate down in the microwave first and then you will put the bottle of nutrient agar with the loosened cap on top of the plate like so and then you set the timer for 30 seconds on high like so and what you're going to be doing next is kind of checking it seeing if it's liquid yet if it's not then you'll be giving it another set 30 seconds so if after 30 seconds you reach in, you kind of give the bottle a little shake and it's still solid, then you know that it needs to go back in. It needs more time. Generally after about two, maybe three rounds of 30 seconds, you'll see something like this where the agar is bubbling. There's kind of a color change that happens when it turns liquid. That's what you're looking for. So it is now liquefied and it's going to be very hot. See all the steam here? So when you take it out of the microwave, you're not going to want to grab the bottle. This time you want to grab the plate. And in case there's any spillage down here, you may actually want to use a pot holder or uh, thermal gloves, something to protect your hands so you don't get burned. Now as for the petri dishes where the agar is going to be poured into, you have a sleeve of petri dishes. You're going to want to go ahead and cut those open like so. And you want to be careful how you cut this because you are going to want to be able to reseal this bag. So you see how she's cutting just below the seam there. Okay, and then you pull out the plate or however many plates you need. And you're just going to take some regular old cellophane tape and close the bag back up. That way you don't get contamination getting into those clean sterile plates that are in there. Now it is important that you understand what you're looking at when you're looking at the petri dish. Which side is the lid? Which side is where the agar goes, the bottom of the plate? So this part that you're picking up here is the lid. You can tell that it is slightly wider and also not, it's not quite as deep. 
right? So this part here is the lid, and this part here is the bottom. And the bottom is where you're going to be pouring the agar into. Okay, so now we have our liquefied agar, and we have our petri dish ready to pour into. So this is what it's going to look like. You can kind of shake it around. You can see that it's nice and liquid. You can be very careful with how you touch it. Now, I have, I have calloused fingers, and I've been doing things like this for a long time. If your hands are heat sensitive, you may want to let it cool to, until you don't have bubbles like this anymore. But you don't want to let it cool so much to where it starts to re-solidify. You've got to do this while it's still liquid. So you may want to wear some kind of gloves or use a pot holder or something. But I'm just kind of holding it with my bare hands, just carefully, gently. And then you're going to take the liquid agar and just pour it into the bottom of the petri dish. And you just want enough to where it will cover the whole surface of that part of the plate. You give it kind of a little wiggle so you don't have empty spaces or bubbles. You see, it's covering the whole bottom of the plate. And you just cover that back up with the lid and you allow that to solidify at room temperature. And if you only want to pour one plate, that's fine. But if you want to go ahead and pour a whole bunch of plates at once while you have your agar liquefied, that's generally what I do, is I set up a bunch of them at once. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Just enough agar to cover the bottom. Give it a little wiggle. Get you another plate. Just enough agar to cover the bottom. A little wiggle. Another plate. Pour. Give it a little wiggle. See, so you can do a lot of these plates in a short amount of time. You just kind of want to work, work fast so your agar doesn't solidify before you get it in the plate. And if you find that you still have empty spaces like here, um, you put just a little bit more in there, give it another wiggle. And in that way you can prepare lots of nutrient agar plates all at once and in a short period of time. And then you can store these, like I said, in a Ziploc or a Gladware container, just something that's sealable. You can store them in the fridge.